Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Art Class. Sorry I'm not there to be able to hear all of your stories that you had on your break. Please save those for when I return next week. Um, I hope you had a great time and I hope you made lots of memories with your families. But let's get started with our art project today. All righty. So we have been talking about the seven elements of art and we're gonna continue those. Um, last time that we were together, we were working on value, which is going to be one of the first steps into really offering us a 3D illusion on a 2D surface, right? Value is one of those that offers us the opportunity as artists to create space, okay? Um, but before we dive too far into the element of space, it's really important to understand the positive and negative space within our drawing, okay? When we create a composition, it's important to be aware of the negative space that is around your shapes. Um, the shapes are defined by the negative space. Uh, the objects that you draw on your page is a shape and it's enclosed in a frame, whether that frame is something that you draw or if it's the boundaries of your actual um, object that you are painting on. So whether it be a canvas, piece of paper, or something of that nature, okay? So the object you draw is the positive shape and the rest of the space that surrounds your object, no matter where that object is, is the negative space. And negative space is really, really important, okay? In 2D artwork, um, a balance of that positive and negative space can create a dynamic composition, a really good, pleasing composition to the eyes. Let's take a, a look at this um, Japanese woodblock print called The Great Wave. And I'm sure most of you have seen this painting before. Um, but if we took out all of the details and we created just a silhouette, a contour line of this great wave, we can see that Hokusai um, displays an almost equal balance between the positive area that he drew and the negative space, okay, the background space. Um, it's just pretty amazing that when you take out those details and you get right down to the basics, you can see that balance there. Okay, so what are we talking about when we're talking balance in art? In any composition, balance is crucial to create works of art that are aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Uh, there's three kinds of balance that artists work with. Um, there's radial balance, uh, symmetrical, and asymmetrical balance. Um, however, symmetrical and asymmetrical are the most common, okay? Radial balance in, um, would be when you are dealing with creating a piece of artwork that is round in shape, okay? And um, that is done, but it's mostly done on a square or rectangle kind of style um, piece of, you know, artwork. So when we're talking about symmetrical, we are talking about that the sides are the same on both sides of the axis. That means like, so let's take a look at this square that has circles in it. If we have, if we look down the vertical line, you can see that there are the same number of circles and half circles on the left side as there are on the right side, okay? And if we look at it on the vertical line uh, or on the horizontal line, it's the same thing. Whatever is on top is on the bottom. That is symmetrical, okay? Now, asymmetrical, that means that the sides on both sides of the access line, um, that they're different. There's different objects, different, um, um, there's different, uh, levels of black and white on it. So if you take a look at the butterfly and you look at the four quadrants there, if we draw that line on the vertical right down the center, you are going to see that there is the top part corner is going to be primarily black with a little bit of white. 
but then it's going to give you more white on the bottom with a little bit of black. And then it's the opposite on the other side, right? There's more white space on the wings, you know, the fluttering of those triangles that are floating out with a little bit of black. And then there's a, a lot of black with a little bit of those triangles in the white area on the bottom. So they are different, but equally balanced because of the number of objects or the color that was used, okay? All right, so positive and negative space um, and having that balance there is um, something that always reminds me of a scripture verse. And that is found in Romans 12, verse two. And it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In our daily lives, it's often quite easy to get distracted in the world we live, and we could get caught up in the things of this world. Um, relying on the Holy Spirit to guide us is the only way to ensure that we stay the course that is pleasing to God. Um, and as Christian artists, especially, it's really important um, that we remember that God calls us to use our gifts for good and use our gifts um, that he gives to us without worshiping or idolizing what we have created. OK, or even allowing the world to do that. Um, our actions or our creations can have a positive effect on those around us. And it can also have a negative effect. OK, so we have to be mindful of the imagery that you create. If we are an artist and we are creating, it is very, very important that we check our hearts before we create and that when we are creating we are creating good imagery that is pleasing to the lord um so we need to guard our hearts to not conform to what the world sees as good art um we need to be seeking what is pleasing to our heavenly father and if we allow the lord to enter into our artwork and be the inspiration for the reason that we create, you will please your heavenly father. So it's really important to have that balance, okay? Um, to really make sure that you understand that your what you are actually creating with your hands um, should balance out what's in your heart. And you should always check your heart and make sure that it's lined up with the Lord so that the images that you create are very pleasing, okay? To God, not to the world. All right, so today we are going to be talking about no tans, and it's a type of artwork, um, and it was created in um, Japan. It's a Japanese design concept that involves the play between lights and darks um, as they're placed next to each other in um, art or in imagery. Okay. These are going to be some examples of some notans. And many of these are going to be very symmetrically balanced. But remember, as an artist, you could also play with asymmetrical, okay? Um, symmetrical is going to be the most, um, uh, it can be easier, if you will, because um, you can see that balance right away. So if you take a look at this one, um, again, looking at it being as a symmetrical balance, if we had an access line that was drawn um, either vertical or horizontal, you would see that the, there is the same objects or the same design on both sides. They're just mirror flipped, okay? Does everybody know what I mean by mirror image? Um, if you take your hands and you put them in front of you and make like a praying hand symbol, you know, how you pray. Um, now, at that moment, if you look at your hands and you split them apart with your pinkies together, that is your hand with your palms up 
that is going to be your hand as a mirror image. Your thumbs are actually on the opposite sides. However, when they are faced together, it is a mirror image. So when we are dealing with a mirror image where it is flat, that is what you're going to do is you're going to be taking that image that you cut out and you're going to be flipping it so it's the mirror image, okay? All right, this one's a little bit more complex. Um, this one has a lot of graphics in it. This is an apple and the apple is cut in half so that you can see the inner sides. And of course, there's lots of imagery here. Um, there's the seeds that actually produce the trees and the roots. Um, so there, the artist did a really good job on playing with the balance of not only um, the um, symmetrical of whatever the is on the right side is on the left, but also with playing with the darks and the lights. Okay. And then of course you have this one where it's got all these little, looks like trees, but the interesting part with this one is that the more they cut it up and the more sections that they have, the more interesting the piece actually is. And the more complex of the balance of playing with black and white is. Okay, and this is our last one. This one really shows you the um, mirror image. If you look at the little iguana here that got cut out, um, it is the opposite, just like our hands where our thumbs are on the opposite side. Um, this is how they cut that iguana out and then they moved it to the white space. Um, they cut it out of the black and they moved it to the white space and they flipped it and they did a mirror image of that, okay? All right, so now what I am going to do is I am going to switch camera views and we are gonna go over the supplies that we are going to need for today. Um, and we will get started on our actual art project. So for today, each of you are going to get a six by 11 piece of black paper. You'll also get a Bristol page. Um, I think that one is, uh, 11 by 14. All right. And um, we will be placing our, after we've done some drawing and some cutting out to create our note hands, we'll be placing it onto our Bristol pad so that there is even space here. Okay. So in addition to the two, um, these two pieces of paper, uh, you'll get a white charcoal pencil. Now the pencil isn't going to have a real sharp edge to it. Uh, these are charcoal pencils. Um, so therefore the lead is very, very fine and it will crumble. So you can't get a real, you know, um, pointed uh, sharp edge. Um, you will also have two different cutting utensils. You're going to have a pair of scissors that you can grab out of our um, supply bin and also an X-Acto knife. Okay, so I hope everybody knows how to use an X-Acto knife. Um, we are all going to be young adults and we're going to use our X-Acto knife in the um, proper way. Each X-Acto knife will have a cap. When you are not using your X-Acto knife, please put your cap back on to ensure that nobody gets cut. Now, these X-Acto knives, um, the knife portion of it, the blade portion, can easily come out, especially when you are cutting and you're doing some twisting around. You could actually um, move the little gripper part that tightens it down. So be aware that sometimes this knife might fall off. If that's the case, just gently put it back in and tighten it back down. Or when you're putting your cap back on, just make give it a nice little snug um, twist to keep that knife inside. But when you are not using your X-Acto knife, please, Please be responsible. Please put your cap back on and place it on the table so we don't have anybody getting cut. And of course, when using it, safety is always the um, utmost priority. If you're not comfortable using an X-Acto knife, you do not have to use it, okay? All right. In addition, each of you will have a cutting board. It won't look like this one specifically. This is just the one I had here in my art room. 
So you will have a cutting board. If you are using an X-Acto knife, you will protect the table by cutting only on the cutting board. Please do not cut directly on the table. You will cut the table and scratch it. And we want to be good stewards of the tables that Peace Church has um, given us the opportunity to use, okay? All right, so we got our two pieces of paper. We got our cutting utensils. We got our drawing utensil. We will need to be able to affix all of the pieces we cut out onto our paper. So when you have done all of your cutting, you'll be using some Mod Podge and there should be some paint palettes in there or I might actually bring some paper plates. I'm not sure yet, but there's at least the paint palettes. Um, when you have finished cutting out your notans and all of your objects, that is when you're going to get your Mod Podge and you're going to put it into your um, one of these little wells. You don't, um, you don't put them in every single one, just pick one and then put some Mod Podge inside there. Um, and that Mod Podge will um, go on white, but then it will clear, it'll dry clear. So in order to put the Mod Podge on, you're going to need a um, paintbrush and I have special paintbrushes in there. They'll be found in a rubber band, okay? Or um, maybe the teacher will pull those out and put them on the counter. These are going to be the only paintbrushes that you use. Um, some might be round and some might be flat, um, but please don't use the other paintbrushes in our supply because when we put glue on them, the bristles can get stiff, okay? So in addition then, you will need a cup of water, all right, to be able, mine is watered down because I had um, paint in it, sorry about that. Um, but we will need to rinse out our paintbrush when we are using our glue after we're all done to try to save the paintbrushes for later, okay? All right, so how are we going to create our no tan? Well, first you gotta come up with an idea, all right? So you can come up with an idea that has a theme to it. Like for instance, the image of our, um, our apple that we've seen where it had the apple and it had all the tree branches. It does not have to be that intricate. As, as a matter of fact, for our um, time-wise today, you really want to make sure that you don't go too intricate, okay? So on your um, black piece of paper, you will, we're going to put the white piece of paper off to the side. Um, you will go ahead and draw some organic shapes and or some um, geometric shapes. I want your shapes to have some interest to it, okay? So if you decide to stick with <clears throat> um, some of your geometric shapes, we're going to make sure that there are several layers in there, okay? So we're not going to just cut out a triangle and call it a day. We want to cut out a triangle, almost like a donut, where it's a triangle within a triangle or a rectangle within a rectangle. That's going to give us the opportunity to have more um, interest in our actual notan. If we just have solid shapes, um, it's, it's, it, it'll work but it's going to look pretty bland. So a little bit more of the intricate um, cuts are going to be really nice. Now you don't, again, have to be real, real, real intricate, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to, after you've drawn, notice that when we draw, what I'd like you to do is your, um, your black piece of paper is going to be in the uh, portrait way. That means that the length, of your actual black paper is going to go up and down, right? It's not going to be faced in the landscaped way, all right? I want you to have it drawn in the portrait way. That way, when we put it down on our piece of paper, it fits nicely right in the center, okay? So make sure that you are drawing in the portrait way. That means that the black piece of paper, the long sides are going away from you here, all right? Okay, second thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you are drawing on the edge on some of these, all right? So some of these, you'll see that I have it drawn where I come right to the edge, okay? 
we want to make sure that there is a space between our shapes. So this was one shape that I drew and it was just an organic shape. All right, and then I left a space. So there's this lay line right here from the original piece of paper. And then I'm going to cut out this shape, okay? And then there's this gap, right? This line that I do not cut. And then there's another shape that I'm going to cut out right here, okay? It's another organic. I'm staying away from the corners. I do not want to cut my corners out. This will give us an actual line to be able to center and equally balance our uh, no tan, okay? Now I do have some um, shapes that are on the inside of the paper. Um, you'll notice that there are a couple of circles, right? There's this rectangle and this triangle and they're not on the edges of my paper, correct? All right, so um, <clears throat> those are going to be if you think of your piece of paper and it has this access line straight down the middle, remember we're going to be doing um, the mirror image, then anything that is on the right side will be put on the white space on the right hand side. Anything that you cut out that is on the left side is going to be put on the right side. This is going to be really symmetrical, okay? All right, so. All you are going to do to start off with is you will start drawing some shapes. If you really feel like you want to have a minute to kind of conceptualize, there is some um, sketch paper up in our art bin with some pencils. You could quick draw something out, maybe some ideas. Please don't spend a whole lot of time on this. You're going to find that this project is going to look really, really cool no matter what you do on here. But the only thing I don't want is I don't want just simple geometric shapes. I want you to turn them into a little bit more complex, okay? All right, so at this point, what you're going to do is after you've drawn, making sure to keep them on the edge, some of them off the edge here, right here. Um, stay away from the corners. Do not draw in the corners. Do not draw on the bottom or on the top because that piece will actually be off the page. You can draw away from the edges. Anything, imagine that this is down the center. So anything that is on the right side of the axis is going to be placed on the right-hand side. Anything that is on the left side of the axis will be placed on the left side. So on most of these, you can probably use your um, scissors. Okay, so when, after you are all finished, um, go ahead and use whatever cutting utensils you have, and you are going to be cutting out each and every one of these shapes. All right, and if you cut it on the right side, you're going to put it on the right side of your page. Just try to remember which side you did. Okay, so you're going to just go around and you're going to cut each of these shapes out. Now, there are no scrap pieces in this project. That means we are not throwing away any pieces of the black or any pieces of the white. Everything you cut out, even if it's a little sliver, will be put onto your white piece of paper. So be mindful of your cuts. Now, if you don't cut right on your line, that's fine. But be mindful of each and every cut. You will not throw away any of these pieces of paper, okay? All right. So, um, so for the ones that are in the center, all right, you'll need to use your X-Acto knife if you choose to actually use the X-Acto knife. Cutting on our cutting board, you are going to use your X-Acto knife and you're going to cut very, very gently. Do not cut fast, all right? But see how I'm twisting around? When I twist, it could actually open that up. So just be mindful. Remember which circle, like if I did these circles, they're gonna go one on one side and one on the other, okay? So we're gonna cut that out with an X-Acto knife or any other objects that you have, okay? 
If it's stuck on there, just use your knife to kind of slice that off. Be very careful. Like I said, try not to cut yourself. Please do not cut yourself. I cut this one on the right side, so it's going to go on my right side. Okay. All right. So I have one already cut out, and I'm going to show you how to assemble it. Okay. So step one, you're going to draw out your shapes. All right. Make them complex. They can be organic or geometric, just make them more complex. Step two, you're gonna cut out your shapes. You're gonna make sure that you are on the edges when you draw, and you can even do some on the inside, okay? You're gonna cut out using either your scissors or your X-Acto knife. When you are not using your X-Acto knife, you're going to put your X-Acto knife with a cap on. Okay, then after all of your shapes are cut out, this one's gonna be a little different than the first one. All right, you are going to get your Bristol piece of paper, the white piece of paper. And I have cut out all of my shapes on this particular one. You're going to put your center the long piece of black that you cut all of the paper out in the center. And you are going to, just like a puzzle, reassemble and put those pieces back in where you originally had cut them out, okay? We're just trying to line up our page here, okay? We're trying to line it up so that we have equal amounts of space on each side, all right? So I'm going to carefully put these back in, in each of my spots. Um, I have this acorn that I put, this particular one I did as a theme, um, trying to think of fall, okay? So after you have cut all of your pieces out, grab your Bristol paper and put it in front of you. And then I want you to put all of your pieces back in and pick the longest one. This piece here is my longest. So if I take that out of where I cut it and I flip it, I want to make sure that I have enough room that it's not going to go off. If it's going to go off my page, just slide it just a hair over, okay? So that's where that piece is going to go. It can come real close to the edge. All right. So now you're going to go back and forth quite a bit. I'm just going to carefully take each of my pieces back out, holding this middle piece down. I don't want this middle piece to move now that I know exactly where I want to place it. I'm taking out the pieces I cut on my left side, sliding them out, just kind of getting them out. <clears throat> excuse me, just getting them away from the center, okay? So now I have all of my pieces out. I have it where I want it to go. Um, I'm going to take my Mod Podge. I'm gonna take my, paper, my um, Mod Podge, all right, with my paintbrush. I know that this piece is my longest, so I'll just kind of keep that one there. I will flip over that center piece. And you don't need to glue every area. Just kind of put some nice dots of glue. All of the areas that you cut out, any one that is kind of small, you know, that might actually pop up once you put it back down. Just kind of dab some glue on here. It doesn't have to be every single area enough. You don't need to, you know, paint the whole back side. You just need to kind of make sure that it is affixed and glued down onto your white bristol. So we're going to take our paintbrush. And we're going to make sure these small pieces down here. You know, those are the main ones that you don't want to rip off. Because remember, we're not wasting any of this black paper. 
Um, every piece that we cut out will be glued down to our white. So we want to make sure that these pieces that are little um, won't actually risk the chance of ripping off. So we really want to make sure. Now this Mod Podge will um, dry fairly quickly. So you got to kind of work quick on this part. Um, after you cut out, this job is really the fastest. All right. <clears throat> so as you lay it down, remember where that one piece was. Make sure that you have enough room here so that it fits. All right, you can kind of work it a little bit and slide it. That should be about right. Make sure that it's level, okay? And then press it down once you get that down. Now, if you have a couple of pieces that pop up, you can stick your paintbrush underneath, all right? So that is our first step, okay? So now my black center piece is actually um, in place. So to glue down our other pieces, I will take that piece and I'll put this piece back into my puzzle, just like a puzzle. I am gonna take my paintbrush <clears throat> and I'm painting on this side, the side that I drew it on, okay? Because remember, we're gonna do the mirror image Right, so we are going to make sure that there is paint on this. If you don't feel comfortable doing it on, remember this Mod Podge glues um, dries clear, so you won't see any of this white. Um, but if you wanna paint it, just remember to paint the side. So it was drawn this way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip it. And it's important, important to line up where I cut. I want this to be as if this line here is a straight drawn line. See how that looks? It blends right in. It matches right up. Okay. So I'm going to put this out. You may find that you get a little glue on your finger. That's okay. All right. And that's my first piece down. All right. I'm gonna to continue to do that with each one, always making sure that I'm gluing on the side I actually drew. So on this leaf, because it's not on the edge of my paper, all right, I'm just gonna move it out here. This is the side I drew on. I wanted that piece up. That's why I put it back in my puzzle, um, just like a puzzle piece, right? I wanna make sure that I am gluing on the right side because we're going to do the mirror image of it. That means we need to flip it. All right, so I'm gonna look and I'm gonna flip this one over. Now it's important to notice that my direction goes this way. So if it's the mirror image, my direction is gonna go this way, okay? And I'm looking at spacing and I'm trying to visualize where that spacing is and how much of an angle it actually is on. So I am trying to make it an exact duplicate of what I cut out. So if my angle goes to the left, I want to make sure when it's the mirror image, it's going to have to go up to the right. That makes sense to everybody? All right, so we're going to continue onward. We're going to glue in each one of these pieces. And I'll just get this one side done, and you'll know. So each time, you're gonna make sure you are gluing on the side that you drew. You're gonna flip it over to get the mirror image. If it is on the edge of your paper, you want to make sure that you line up those edges so that it looks like it is a straight line, okay? Make sure these corners so that you have this nice straight line all the way up. All right, all right, so we're gonna do the same. Now this one is important because this one is actually twofold. So I cut out the center portion of this leaf. So when I put it back in, I wanna take this leaf portion, the side that I put out, I'm just gonna put it off to the side right now. I don't wanna glue that because what's gonna end up happening is that has to go back into the puzzle piece, all right? Meaning 
I cut that out. So if I flip this, this leaf part over, I line up my lines. Okay. Now this piece is cut out. So I actually have to come back and put it on this side, place it down here on this side. So I got a glue on this side because that was where it was. Right, and I want to make sure that I get some all the way up to the edge. And now I have to put it back into my leaf and line that line up. And it's the mirror image. Actually, it looks like a mustache. There you go. All right. So you're going to, the very first thing you're going to do is that you are going to get a black piece of paper. You're going to draw your images on there, your shapes. Please make sure that they are complex. If you use geometric shapes, make sure that you do some cutouts where you're gonna cut out the center of them, kind of like what I did here with the leaf, okay? Um, you can do a design where it has um, a, a theme for it. These are like trees with leaves, acorns, maybe a cloud. I think I did an apple down here. It's up to you. You get to be as creative as you want. But notice that the more intricate and more complex your actual cuts are, the more interesting the piece will be. Okay, so please be mindful that you need to cut some of yours and draw some of yours right on the edge. And some of them should be from the inside of your paper. Unless you're really uncomfortable with using an actual X-Acto knife, then you can keep all of yours on here. Do not cut an image all the way across. Do not throw away any of your black at all. There is no scraps on this project. Everything you cut out will be glued back down in a mirror image, okay? I will also include a picture of what this looks like when it is all finished um, in this uh, file as well. So I hope everybody has a fun time with this. Um, I will include a baggie. I am hoping that each of you get this done today. Um, if you do not, um, I will find out from your teacher and uh, maybe we can leave some time next week to be able to finish it. Okay, so make sure you give enough time to clean out your paint brushes um, and to the very last thing that you want to do is to make sure that when you are finished with your, if you are using a paint palette with a Mod Podge in it, take a piece of um, paper towel or rinse it off in the sink and um, get that glue out so it doesn't stay in there. Uh, we wanna get it nice and ready for the next class um, and not have your um, teacher actually take care of that, okay? So each of you make sure you have enough time to be able to take that glue out and have it empty. All right. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoy this project. I can't wait to see what they look like um, next week. Um, hopefully, if you end up taking your project home, please take a picture of it so that I can see it. Um, enjoy, and I hope you have a blessed day, and I will see you all next week. Bye, everyone.